Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at fragment caching as well as collection caching. These are two strategies that haven't been deleted from the Rails universe yet. Uh, I say that because I, th I believe page caching and action caching were removed in Rails 4. Uh, so fragment and collection caching are two of the few options we have left. Of course, there's like other, other things I'm being slightly hyperbolic, but you get the idea. So to perform fragment caching, it's pretty simple. Basically what we do is we grab a fragment on our page. In this case, each of our partials is a fragment and we tell Rails, hey, this is important. We need to cache this. Now Rails do, does do some uh, caching out of the box for you, I believe, uh, but there's always gonna be instances where you need to manually set up some caching. Maybe there's something important that you wanna make sure that this uh, changes more frequently uh, on a page, but there's other stuff on the page you don't care about like the posts where if a user sees an outdated version of the post, it's not that big of a deal, or if they have to grab, it's not that big of a deal. So for fragment caching, usually you're fragmenting a portion of the page and caching it. Uh, so partials are pretty good for this. And you're also gonna have collections. A collection is just a set of posts in this case, uh, where you can say cache this entire thing. There's some slight nuance there, which we'll take a look at after we create our uh, video application. We'll just say Rails new video. Now. In terms of performance gain, in your development environment, you're never really gonna see this unless you like really crank up what you're loading. Uh, but for your production, your users are going to notice this. If you've ever been on a like website that isn't properly optimized, like I'm just gonna go ahead and shame myself, I use WordPress. Uh, the initial hit here is pretty good. Oops, I'm zoomed all the way in. Uh, but if you go to a page that hasn't been visited in a while, okay, that was the wrong example. Let's go over to the about page. Uh, or path find out. Okay, I don't know. I guess this has all been cached on, on my device. Uh, but if you ever go to a, a website that isn't properly optimized, that initial page hit can be quite noticeable. Of course, WordPress is pretty good out of the box, but if you muck it up, it can be uh, quite quite mucked. Let's just say it's, it's full on Pokemon mode uh, in terms of how much uh, you can mess things up. But the uh, the Rails caching is actually pretty intuitive if you don't go too far uh, off the beaten path. So we'll go ahead and we'll see the indoor video run a code dot. What I mean by that is the uh, caching of, of partials or, or collections uh, is really intuitive compared to like your, your WordPress caching where you're setting up all these external services and you don't really know what you're doing. To test this, we're gonna go ahead and do a bundle add for the faker gem. That'll give us the ability to create some test data. We can then come into our DB and our seeds. And of course, we have to generate a scaffold. So we'll say Rails G scaffold post title body of type text, just like that. Go ahead and do a DB colon migrate command after that. And then in our seed file, we can then say, all right, I want to do 100, oops, 100 dot times do for our post. So we'll say post dot create with, oops, create with a title and a body just like that cool Let's say end down here save this run a rails db colon seed looks good to me uh, and then we can come out of this uh, file so for the benchmarking we're going to be doing we're going to be relying on what rails tells us but if, the, if there's ever something you need to personally benchmark just as a quick aside you can come into let's say our post controller uh, and let's say you want to specifically benchmark the index action you can do something like benchmark equals benchmark benchmark dot measure do wrap everything you want inside of a do block right here so we'll grab all of our posts and then we'll render and after we do that we can then say all right we've we've done all that we need to let's do a logger dot info for the benchmark benchmark results and then we can do benchmark dot real we can multiply this by 1000 to say that this is in milliseconds uh, of course, Rails is going to tell us what the index action does for us out of the box. If we do a Rails S uh, and we refresh, we'll see that it says completed 200 OK in 474 milliseconds. Of course, there's some additional stuff happening. So this number and this number won't exactly match up, but you get the idea. So if you ever need to benchmark something in Rails, this is just how you can do it. Just because we're looking at numbers, someone's going to ask. Uh, so this is probably a good way to, to show you or a good time. But OK, let's come into our views, our posts and our post index page. Now, if you want to cache something, uh, specifically something that isn't uh, you know, going to be uh, optimized by Rails out of the box, 
Uh, one of the ways you can do that is you can say, all right, let's say we have these posts for each of these posts, we wanna cache them. So let's do a cache post do, uh, and let's come down here and do the end block. Now, it doesn't always make sense to wrap stuff in a, in a block like this, but let's go ahead and let's refresh. Uh, and now we should hopefully see uh, if we uh, refresh that nothing's happening. So why is nothing happening? Well, it's because we haven't enabled caching yet, which is what I mean when I say this can be a little bit deceptive. Your numbers here look pretty good and your initial number is always going to be bigger than the subsequent number. So this is 300 milliseconds, we refresh, it's 27.6 milliseconds or 28. You can see that like, although we don't have caching enabled, something's clearly happening here. And a lot of that can just be, you know, what fluctuations with your computer, etc. So don't put too much stock into this out of the box. Uh, but if you want to enable caching, we can do, oops, we can do a Rails dev colon cache. That'll enable it. If you ever need to see if caching is enabled, you can come into your config, your initializers, oops, I'm sorry, your, your environment, your development.rb. In here around line 20-ish, you'll see this block which says if you've run Rails dev cache, it should be enabled. If it's enabled, it'll do this stuff, which is just saying perform caching, enable fragment caching, set the memory store by default, it's set to the null store, and set the headers to expire after two days or have a max age of two days. Down here, this is if you don't have caching enabled. If you wanna check if caching is enabled, you can always just toggle it by running this command again, or you can come into your TMP uh, directory and if you run dev cache, you'll see that you have a caching-dev.txt file, which is how it checks if uh, caching is enabled. If you don't have it, you uh, aren't caching, as you can see right here. But important to note, if you don't have that file, you might still be caching because someone like me could come in here, get rid of this if statement, get rid of this else block, and could just say, all right, we're, we're just always caching. So just make sure you're checking to see if these things are enabled. And if you do have a check for this file, make sure you check if the file exists or just toggle it, just uh, to be aware that that's sort of how that works. But okay, we have this cache happening. We have our cache store enabled. Let's go ahead and let's run a, oops, not, not that. Let's run a Rails S and let's go ahead and let's refresh. Our initial hit is 338 milliseconds. We can see right here, we're writing fragments, we're reading fragments, and you can see each of these has the ID in front of it, which is why it's going like 100, 99, 98, etc. If we now refresh, we can see this happens in 36 milliseconds, uh, 25 milliseconds, 22, 24. It looks like 25-ish is about average here. But okay, we have all of these, uh, what else can we do? Well, this fragment caching is great, but you'll see our time isn't great here. If you do need to speed things up a little bit more, there is one other trick we could try, which is to just get rid of this entire block here. Instead, you could say render a partial, which will be post slash post, pass in a collection, which will say collection is at posts. And then you can do a, well, I guess we'll just leave it like this. We can save this, come over here and refresh. And you'll see this is already down to 13 milliseconds and we don't have all of those lines with the read fragments because now it's just going through and it's rendering a collection of posts 100 times right here 100 times if we refresh you'll see it averages around probably like six or seven milliseconds but you can also tell this that it should be cached so cached is true and now if we refresh we can come down here and we can see uh, the initial hit is 25 milliseconds uh, but if we refresh, this number right here will go from zero out of 100 cache hits to 100 out of 100. And this is where your time save happens because uh, now you have all of these things cached. You'll also notice you're not hitting it 100 times uh, like we were previously with all of these reads. Uh, we now have all of this happening in one quick little section right here where it's just doing the entire grab of the collection. And if you ever want to see what this looks like in an actual uh, scenario, what you can do is we'll just quickly revert back to our at posts here where we iterate through each of these. And then instead of just doing this, we can come down to the bottom here and we can do a sleep for zero point, I don't know, 0 0.1, I guess, something like that. And now we'll go ahead and we'll refresh. It'll take a minute here to read through all of these, but each of these is gonna have the sleep in here for a 10th of a second, uh, which means we're definitely gonna see the time balloon up quite a bit. 
There you go. So that took 10,000 milliseconds. So assuming each of our hits here takes, uh, you know, a tenth of a second, if we refresh, you'll see the stuff is cached. So we're not hitting this as an issue. And then we can come into our console here, run a rail C, do a post.first.update uh, title set to testy boy. Go ahead and save that over here. Let's refresh. You'll see our first hit here is 127 milliseconds. Again, because it's going to be a tenth of a second just on that one. So it's usually 27 milliseconds, but we have an extra hundred because we're updating that one. But now if we refresh, we're back down to here. So that's where you can see where that performance gain uh, actually happens. But I just don't like putting sleeps in, but like we don't have a choice here because it's so hard to stress test this. Uh, so yeah, that's one way you can test it. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.